Hypocrisy. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in Central Minnesota. We're not gonna look. We're not gonna talk about it. Just look. I'm not gonna talk about it. We're not gonna do it. We're just gonna. We're just gonna move into the show. I just, I have to say one thing. Fuck my life sometimes. That being said, hey guys, we've got a killer show today. Killer, tremendous, stupendous, uh, fantastical, phantasmagal. And it all starts with one man, Michael Bach. Now we're going to talk more about this big, fat, fucking weirdo. He looks like a fried egg on cocaine just kidding we're not going to talk about michael bach but i wish i wish we were i wish we were i wish we were luminaire says lol suit updates wait what lol suit updates mine louise 89 says how are you gonna put your dick inside your life to fuck it though no i didn't i didn't say i was gonna i, I was asking someone else to I was asking someone else to i kind of want to look up like, I know there's got to be more like Michael Bach private security. I feel like this is probably the most famous private security guard on earth. Let's see. Oh, my God. Oh God. No, 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 no. I found Aaron Schaff's Instagram on accident. Guys, there's, yeah. Look at this. I mean, look. What are we supposed to do? The Michael Box stories. He's everywhere. I mean, we knew he was everywhere. He's all encompassing. He's all encompassing. Haven King says you're jealous because his shoulders are bigger than yours. Shoulders are big. <laughs> Brother, his his fingers are bigger than my shoulders. He's a big motherfucker. Luminaire says you teased yesterday in your show description there's been something. Wait, am I? No, I don't think so. Hold on, let me look this up. I don't think I put that in the show description. It was, I'm probably talking about something else. Uh, let's see. Oh, shit. That's my bad. That's an... Oh, so... Uh, weird. How strange. Okay. That is actually an old description. That's an old description. Um, Rumble has this cool thing where you can set up templates, live stream templates, has a thumbnail, and then it preserves other stuff if you want to like recycle a basic thing, do a repeat show. Get the fuck off there. They have these templates, and I use a template. That happens to be the show that was like the first show I did after the templates were created or something like that. So it's right there. Or maybe after a new thumbnail was created. I'm not sure which one it was. It's right there. That's the one I used. And I just forgot to change the description. I thought I did, but got it wrong. Got it wrong. My bad. No, that's an old description. It actually exists on the uh, video where that happened. So I apologize. I have heard nothing, nothing about uh, my lawsuit. Uh, we are waiting on the appeals court to rule on it. That can take 90 plus days. That can take quite a long time for that to go through. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, that was not, um, not intended. Actually, I, you know, I hate things because I wrote a description somewhere, which I thought was on the fucking video. Let me see if the YouTube... Does the YouTube video have the same description? Probably does. Find it real quick. Who cares? View your channel. Live. Yesterday. Yeah, weird. Holy shit. Look, I don't know... Uh, I don't know why it's there. I typed up a description that matched the... Stories, which is what I, excuse me, you weren't supposed to see that. I typed up a description that matched the stories 
And uh, it must, I probably hit like control Z or something stupid, some old key combo uh, because I'm a white bread ass niggas, man. I don't know. Critical decision. Yikes says stop drinking. I mean, that wouldn't have helped the description. I wasn't drinking before typing the description yesterday. So, I mean, I don't think so. Maybe it would, maybe it would help. I don't know. I mean, I know I wasn't drinking before, but I don't think it would help, but maybe it would. Who knows? I'll stop right now. Anyway, we have some news stories today. Oh, qu questions is misspelled. That's true. I'll have to fix that one. God damn it. Let's, uh, let's fix it right now. We're going to do live uh, proofreading. If you find any other errors, please submit them to the complaint box, which is just uh, me dying. It's just me dying. Fixing that right now on both uh, things. The YouTube's already fixed. We're about to fix this one over on Rumble. By the way, hello to Rumble. Hello to YouTube. We're here. We love you. We are going to do a show tonight. Uh, well, we're already doing a show tonight, but we're doing a show tonight. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I do. I do. Because it's Thursday. And what's there to enjoy about a Thursday? If not, like, just doing this, I guess. So, we got, uh, we got this. I have three. Look, here's, if you haven't figured it out, the format of the show lately. Because this is the easiest format to stay relatively on track for, although it lends itself to the flexibility of talking about a fat security guard for three hours, which was so much fun. God fucking loved that. Like, mm, mm. Michael Bach, there's potential there. There is. Because I think one day he can be a real guy. So, um, typically though, I pick three to four news stories that have some theme or some legal point or something I want to talk about. And then that's what I put in the title. So people like my interpretation of what's going on in a couple words. And then I write the description based on that. And then we do the show and try to base it on that. But it's always free to be distracted because look, this is live for a reason. If I really, really, really desperately needed to stick to an exact format with a script and stuff, I wouldn't do live video. God damn. I would do pre-recorded, like if it had to be a specific thing. But it doesn't. It doesn't. I can get sidetracked. You guys can sidetrack me, distract me, whatever you want to do. And we can have a good time. That's what we, uh, that's the fun part. So we'll, we'll go from there. Um, all right. Tonight though, we have the Ugandan courts rejecting modernity. I don't know if you guys know this. Some of you do, but, uh, Uganda has, some um, opinions that are different than the rest of the world on some things. Why are you gay? Why are you gay? Why are you gay? Why are you gay? They eat the poo poo. So Uganda doesn't put up with, um, I think there's a medical term for it, that gay shit. Uganda does not put up with that gay shit. They don't have any fucking time for it. They're like, gays, not even once. No. And so they passed a law that outlaws consensual uh, gay sex. And if, if you have consensual gay sex, you can face like up to life in prison. If you have an aggravated gay sex, I don't know what that is. I don't know what aggravated gay sex is. Maybe it's like after a fight or something where they've slapped each other and like, nah, and then they make up like gay makeup sex. If you do that, uh, death penalty. Just the death penalty, though. They're like, why are you gay? Because you die. Like, they're fucking done. And I think it's one of the only places, it's like one of the last vestiges on Earth where they're like, you know what? To the West and to the East and to the North and to the South, fuck off. We don't care about your shit. We don't like gays. Now, me, I'm a lover of everybody. I don't care what anybody does. Like, just don't make me do anything about your shit. Like, I don't, don't make me be gay. I don't want to hear about your gay stuff. I don't want to, like, have uh, gay stuff forced on me or my kids. Like, I don't want to hear your stories, like, unless I'm asking. 
I don't have to go to training to deal with the gays. I thought that was offensive. Whatever that is. I just want to live. And like, if you want to be like, don't ask, don't tell, and don't be gay on me. That's fine. Like, I'll be gay where I choose. So, I don't need your help. Um, that's fine by me. But Uganda's like, you know what? We don't like it. They eat the poo poo. We don't like it. They put the hand in the buttocks. We don't, they don't like that. So they, they're like, gays, no. And it's kind of like ignoring the human element of it, in which I'm not a big fan of governments in general and their, uh, their determinations about people and how they treat their citizens. I'm not Ugandan, so I can just say, well, okay, it's not my problem because I'm not ever going to be Ugandan. As far as I can tell, uh, I don't think I would make it in Uganda, probably because they have an anti-gay law, but really, like, I don't, I don't anticipate being a Ugandan. So I look at it and then I get to go, okay, let's look at this academically because I'm not Ugandan. No one I know is. And if I know them and they're in Uganda, guess what? They're going to get the death penalty soon. So so I get to look at this academically. I get to look at this uh, you know, scholarly in a, in a fashion uh, of erudite nature. I look at it and go, should countries be allowed to execute the gays? Maybe. I think it's an interesting discussion. So we're going to start there. And then we've got the New York Attorney General, Letitia James, right, who is questioning now Trump's bond. So Trump posted a bond for the appeal in his uh, civil fraud case that he lost in New York, right? He wants to appeal that shit. And so he posted a bond. He was originally asked to post almost a half a billion dollars, but he hammered it out. We got a good... We got a good negotiation down to 174 million, 175 maybe on a hard day. Depends on the trading cycles and all of that. Um, Mar-a-Lago has beautiful cycles, high resistance, low resistance, very low seats, if you know what I'm saying. Very low seats. Alania, beautiful. Um, so they have these, uh, sorry, sorry. So Trump posts a bond that's worth $175 million just in case, right? In case he uh, loses his appeal and ultimately loses the case, they will take that $175 million straight away. This was not actually to do the appeal. Apparently, New York does not require an appeal bond to do the appeal. However, this bond was a surety bond for the purpose of making sure that the New York Attorney General cannot actually seize Trump's property to serve as payment for the uh, judgment, right? That's very different than an appeal bond that's necessary. This says uh, an appeal bond you have to post to do an appeal in the first place. A surety bond like this says, okay, we're going to start taking your shit and liquidating it to pay off your debt. You go, no, 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 I'm going to post this bond. You don't have to do that, right? That's how that goes. And how you get a bond like this, well, you typically, I mean, Bonds is big. You have to go private, very specific private. You can't go to a bail bondsman that's on the, you know, on a strip mall with bars in the window. You have to go to a, an equity firm or something, some sort of investor almost. What they'll do is they'll post up the bonds. So they'll take 175 million, bam. They'll give it to New York or they'll guarantee that they have it to the state of New York. And then they will charge you some percentage, which you negotiate. You can figure five to 10%, something like that. So 175 million, 10%, 17 and a half million dollars. Now, if you win your case and you don't have to pay the 175 million, they're going to give you back your 175 million minus, minus the, uh, the bond fee amount, which is at five to 10%, whatever. It could really be any amount. I mean, you can negotiate it. There's no rule that it has to be something, but a lot of people think like a good rule of thumb, five to 10%. So you know, if it's 10%, 17 and a half million, if it's 5%, what, uh, eight and three quarter million, something like that. My math is not Asian, but they seem to make a lot of money. If, and you, you lose the amount that they, that your fee amount that you pay that in addition to the bond amount. So they take the cash, basically hold it or, or collateral or whatever they guarantee in their own way, the funding. And so what the hell? Uh, they guarantee in their own way the funding. 
So um, sometimes, depending on the amount, you know, they don't have to do much of a guarantee. Maybe they put a lien on a house or whatever. If it's $175 million, though, you have to put up collateral that is valuable enough for them to guarantee that they'll receive their $175 million that they're promising to pay if you lose. And so in this case, Trump uh, has asserted that he has put $175 million in cash to the company in some way. Mm. Mm. Uh, and now, though, the Attorney General of New York is questioning the validity of the bond. Show me. Show me where the money is, right? Like Because it's Trump, even though Trump can probably secure a $175 million bond because Trump probably has $175 million of assets and Trump probably just made several billion dollars on true social going public. You know, he could, he could maybe do it. Now, when he was trying to get an almost $500 million bond, it was much harder. He got turned down something like 20, 30 times. Um, that's $500 million, right? That's, that's not $175 million is a shitload of money. $500 million is it's all. In weird way, it's almost unfathomably more than 175 million. Like, because you can find people who make 175 million dollars and ask them to do it again, and they're like, "Jesus Christ!" Like, I just did it. It's like, but don't you want 350 million dollars instead? And they're like, "Yes," but it's not easy to do that. As the money in the hundreds of millions of dollars goes up, it becomes remarkably harder to get that money. So you have to have very, very uh, secure investors. Now, the attorney general's questioning it. Are they questioning it because it's invalid? No, they're questioning it because it's Donald Trump. And they will bleed him and try to embarrass him at every turn. Oh, well, we don't think someone actually gave you the money. It must be a lie or whatever. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. I fucking hate these people. But, like, just treat the man as you treat any other person. And this wouldn't be a problem. But they won't. Right? They can't treat trump like any other person they'll treat him like trump and they hate him and he's a target so we'll talk about that and then i stumbled upon this article uh from the how do i word this they were this article is from the uh the I guess the stock market Oracle, something like that. The investment Oracle is some chick and she predicted the, uh, the housing collapse as if she was the only one, but she predicted the housing collapse. So she's called the Oracle or whatever. She is predicted. Now the housing prices are going to drop tremendously, which is the opposite of what most people say. And what we've seen lately doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Just is, uh, she has predicted a, catastrophic drop of housing prices. Why though? As always, it's fucking young men's fault. It's young men's fault. Young men just aren't standing up. Just aren't standing up. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to, we're going to just have to talk about young men and the, the problem with them. It's their fault. Housing prices are going to collapse. Which is just great. It's just great. It's always young men's fault. As if young men don't have enough fucking garbage to deal with. <sighs> uh, that's the... This is the thing. Look, women, I know all your problems. <laughs> Believe me. Everybody knows. We hear about them all the time. But young men... In particular, we're talking guys in their 20s. I wish I could express to you, if you don't know, the life of a man in his 20s. Nobody gives a goddamn fuck about you. Nobody cares. Nobody. Like, they tolerate you at jobs. Like you're there. Your effort doesn't matter. Uh, not, nothing matters. Like, there are a few industries which can value some youth and youthful energy, but most of them, sorry, what do you know? You're just a dumb. And they're right a lot, of, like in a lot of ways, you just kind of, you're in your 20s, what do you know? You don't know much. But they have, like a 20 to 29-year-old white male 
God, nobody gives a shit about what you have to say or think. It's fucking funny. It's funny to me because I'm well past it, right? I mean, nobody cares what I have to say, but that's for different reasons. I earned that. They didn't even have to work for it. They just got it. So, um, they have enough going on. Dating's a fucking mess. They're not going to get any good income most of the time until they uh, prostrate themselves, break down their bodies, sell their souls, or just get older. Like, they're, that's your options. Um, they're going to hear over and over and over again how they're the cause of women's problems. They can't talk to women anymore. Not just as dating a problem, but like, you go to a workplace and you work there and you're like, well, hey, that's a nice dress. Well, you're fired and in prison. Like the amount of hurdles that they have to go over uh, would stop Lizzo from getting to a food truck. And they don't need to bear the responsibility of the U.S. housing market on their shoulders. They're still in their 20s. Their shoulders haven't broadened out. Look, now, I have not gone through shoulder puberty, okay? You cannot judge men based on age and shoulder width on me. My shoulders still have a soprano voice. They're like, they can't lift anything. They're embarrassing. They don't even have hair on them. Nothing. They've not, I've not gone through shoulder puberty. I may never do it. I took hormone blockers in my shoulders because my shoulders are trans women's shoulders. That's just them's the ropes. I don't know. That's how that they identify. But other men, normal people, regular people, you know, they broaden out uh, through their 20s into their 30s. Then they get fat from the 30s into their 40s. That's how normal people operate. And you gain respect both with shoulder width and fat as a man. Women, sorry. Any increase in your size, in the fucking garbage. That's where you go. But guys have it rougher than you because even in the garbage, you're pulling all the guys who are losers but will still pay for your shit. It's amazing. You still have a cornucopia of guys. They have a cornucopia of tears. Usually someone else is that they're trying to fix and that person won't fuck them either. So... That's how guys go. They don't need the burden of a fucking housing crisis on them. But it is their fault, though. You know why? Because if it sure as fuck isn't mine. All right. All right. So those are the three stories. I've got some other stories that we can use as well. Um, if you distract me with a good topic or a good question, happy to uh, address that. We're just going to have a fun time tonight. All right, guys? We are going to flip to Rumble at an hour in. Because, right, like, that's the agreement. Although, although my new agreement does not require a rumble flip. I can do the whole show on rumble. I don't have to start on YouTube. And I might try that out sometime soon. We'll see. But, yeah. We'll give it a shot. We'll see what's going on. We're going to do the rumble flip today. We do have a sponsor for the show. It's Field of Greens. Um, oh, well, you know what? I forgot. Let me do this. Field of Greens. They're the sponsor of the today's show. And actually, this one has a requirement on it. I have to do it in the first 30 minutes. I normally don't have... Um, they don't give me speech requirements. They do give me a... Uh, They give me a document. We've got a script, ladies and gentlemen. We do have that. So I have a script to read. Um, but you, before I read the script, I want to I want to give you my personal take because uh, the script is always dumb. It's always dumb. But let me pull up the pull up the web page. Fieldofgreens.com. Promo code knows is what you got. So here we go. Um, if you go to fieldofgreens.com, you'll find this page. I'm not going to keep this up the whole, well, I'm not going to keep it large the whole time. We'll let it soften and limp down a little bit. So here's the field of greens thing. You know, you can check out all their bestsellers and stuff. Look, one of the first things people notice when they go to field of greens or brick house nutrition, whatever it is, is fieldofgreens.com will take you there. Promo code knows. If you go there and you look at the prices, you're going to go, Ooh, like they're not the cheapest thing. It is a supplement a fruit and vegetable supplement. It's to give you servings of fruits and vegetables for a balanced diet. Like if you don't have time or if you don't like vegetables that much, you mix it into a drink. And so does four. I would show you, but I ran out because I kept drinking it. It's gone. That being said, 
It is a little expensive. The reason it's expensive is because it's actually pretty good. Pretty fucking good. They have this guarantee about like your health improving uh, as you use it. And if you have a negative, like if you have a decline in your health, they'll refund your money. They have details on that. That doesn't matter to me. I'm telling you, uh, oddly enough, my health has significantly, like the blood test, like I know you guys are like, oh, use AIDS. Yeah, I do. But the blood test, aside from my white cell count, is all improved. Um, so that's good. All right, so here we go. Field of grains is the healthiest thing I do every day. Well, did because I don't have any more because I drank it all. Field of grains. Brickhouse, send me more. I need to put it in my vodka. I need to put it everywhere. I want field of greens. Look, I want a mainline field of greens. I'm going to snort it. I'm going to cook it. I'm going to inject it into my veins. I'm going to boof it. I'm going to drink it. I'm going to eat it on my Cheerios. Fieldofgreens.com. Promo code knows. It's the healthiest thing I do every day. And I want you on this journey with me. It's literally. This is what they wrote. It's literally one scoop a day like charlie pooth it tastes great tony the tiger actually it's pretty good it's pretty good I'm not gonna lie it's pretty good there's one that i didn't like at first but i liked it soon and that wasn't because of the ak-47s they pointed at my head or the bombs they strapped to my children it was because i just organically organic started to like it but unironically they all tasted good to me Couple sips of the one was, but then it got good. I don't know. I like the line flavor. Guys, it says, I like the flat line flavor. Wait, if it's the flat line flavor, um, I like the Robin Williams flavor. I like the Jeffrey Epstein flavor. I like the Stephen Hawking flavor. I like the Bill Gates flavor. Spoiler alert. Just kidding. And. It's completely improved my life. Completely. Completely. Not, not an aspect. This is nutrition the way nature intended. Uh, share what you notice when taking... Oh, I, I wasn't supposed to read that. I wasn't supposed to read that. Uh, hold on. What I noticed when taking Field of Greens, here's what most people say. So they gave me some hints. I'm just going to say what they say, and then I'll tell you what I noticed. So way more energy throughout the day they said sleeping better throughout the night, healthier hair and skin. Oh, well, geez, shucks. Helps with digestion. My stomach feels better. It says that it has an ellipses. And then it says feeling better and healthier overall. Look, it's really like, I'm going to say the digestion one. I'm, I, I am. Of those, certainly, that's the one. But the other thing is, if nothing else, if nothing else, I feel like I tried harder. You may think that's a joke. That's not a joke. That's not a joke. I feel like I tried harder at life after drinking Field of Greens. I was like, oh, God damn. Here I thought I was half-assing it today, but nope. I'm three-quarter-assing it today because I drank my Field of Greens. I'm going to probably get a little bit better. I don't know. Maybe. Got to give it a shot. That's not a bad. Look, that's actually a good thing. So I'm, I'm going to stick with that one. It says, Field of Greens. Wait, it's I say. This is me. Field of Greens is radically different. Each organic fruit and vegetable was medically chosen. I don't know what medically chosen means. If the chat can help me. Chat, does anybody know what medically chosen means? How do you medically choose something? How do you non-medically choose something? Can you hermetically choose something? That's a trans from a his medically. That's a her medically. How do you medically choose something? Each fruit and vegetable was medically chosen to support heart, to support heart and vital organ health. Well, heart health and vital organ health. This is why I love copywriters, right? Like, guys, I, I, I have to tell you, like, this is still an ad. This is still an ad. I wanted to be a copywriter for an advertising company when I got out of college. I was like, oh yeah, that'll be fun. I'll write ads because ads are hilarious. I will, I'll just do that. I'll write copy. Th this is why I'm glad I didn't to support heart and vital organ health because your heart isn't a vital organ, right? Like you have your heart and then you have your vital organs, but you want to support your heart health and your vital organ health. 
You wouldn't want to lose those other vital organs. Like your heart, though, that thing's a piece of shit. It can go, but it supports both. Don't worry. Field of Greens little powder goes all over your body. It's not limited to your non-vital organs. Then, like, it doesn't discriminate, right? It's not racist. It's like kidneys, that's cool. There's two of those. It's fine. It's like conjoined twins. No one likes the second one, but we keep it anyway. No, it's good. Your heart? Yeah, okay. Some lungs? Those are twins that are a little closer. Kissing cousins, maybe? Kissing twin, Kissing siblings? What do we got? I don't know. It supports all the organs, not just the vital ones. Why would they do that? I trust Field of Greens to keep me healthy. Unironically true. I, I have the results. Like, I'm not even joking here. This is seriously. I, okay, wait. I'm going to blink twice for no AK-47s in this moment. All right. Legitimately, I drank it for a while. My health numbers got better. I don't know why. Guys, I live. Oh, my God. If there was a garbage truck called male health that'd be my body like right there like, what do you eat i don't know trash do you eat anything good no i'm allergic to all that now like milk well milk's not the only good thing for you what about other stuff like eggs well i'm not allergic to those do you eat those eh, on occasion what do you eat zebra cakes maybe donuts cereal sadness mayonnaise i said when i said sadness it was mayonnaise that's what i was talking about you know the Garbage truck of life, but my health improved for the first time since college. Did I do anything else better? Here's what you have to ask. I get out of college. I'm 22 years old. I just got married. So I'm already getting gray hair and I'm wondering why life exists. Everything's bad. And I'm in this like pretty good shape. And then I go through life. It's a steady fucking decline for all of it. Health wise. Some life is good, but health wise, like I'm getting fat and dumb and walking around like an idiot. And, uh, and you're like, Oh God, I don't feel good. My knees hurt. My body hurts. My back hurts. Other people's bodies hurt when I walk by them. It's terrible. And all of a sudden I get this ad deal with field of greens. And I start drinking this stuff and I'm like, yeah, this stuff's kind of good. And I'm healthier than I've been. I'm healthier than I was at the end of college. I don't know why I shouldn't be. Everything I do in life is worse, way worse than it was. I'm way more stressed now. I have children. They steal your soul. We're going to keep going because I could talk about this for a while. It's not a good thing. Not a good thing. Do I exercise? No. I exercise anger and rage. I exercise restraint when I'm around other people. That's a new one. Flexing that muscle so I don't kill a bitch. Anyway, that's at the church. Because when you want to kill a bitch, probably at church. I actually do trust Field of Greens to keep me healthy because, well, they did. You know, my doctor didn't improve my health. I've been going to a doctor for years. All they say is, Mwah. maybe try fish oil pills. I'm like, are you serious? Oh, I need some omega-3s? Cool. Thanks. Did you get that from the same commercial on the Lifetime channel that I did? I don't want your stupid fucking pills. First time in forever. Medically chosen field of greens. I promise. This is a call to action with a promo code. That's, that's in red on the side of the copy. I promise you're going to love this product. But if for any reason you don't, they'll give you a 100% money back guarantee. I got you 15% off your first order plus free rush shipping. I got you. Visit fieldofgreens.com and use promo code NOSE. That's promo code NOSE at fieldofgreens.com. Fieldofgreens.com. Not to be confused with Kim.com. That motherfucker gets arrested. You won't. Neither will Field of Greens. Field of Greens does not guarantee or promise anything according to this ad. I'm their lawyer. I wrote that. No, they wrote that. They told me to say all of that too. I'm blaming the whole show on them. They wrote this whole show. Here we go. So now that's done. Guys, go buy some Field of Greens. I mean, what are you? I've met you guys. Terrible. Absolutely horrible. Field of Greens isn't going to fix that. It'll just make you healthier. You're still going to be bad people though. Which is why you watch the show. All right. I think that took enough time. 
Um, here we go. Let's let's hit these super chats and we'll get into the stories. We'll get into the story. Grifty, did you hear Joe is leaning towards filing suit to have Trump ungagged? Why would you do that? Maybe he likes it. In the New York case and have the trial broadcast on First Amendment grounds. No, I didn't I didn't hear that because I don't hear anything anymore. Uh, Aurora Uplinks, 18-month member chat says, Rakeda, may I ask? Seen any good films lately? Um, let's see. Uh I've had this new practice of having movies on kind of in the background, but they're all movies I've watched because they're in the background. But I rewatched Pain and Gain, sort of. I rewatched Snatch, sort of. Both great movies. Um, I'm gonna rewatch Slither pretty soon. Like maybe tonight, tomorrow, something like that. But um, yeah, that's uh that's that. Uh Rob Price. Says maybe aggravated homo would be something like a guy giving another guy a rusty trombone. I mean, possibly, possibly. Look, I prefer non rusty trombones. Use some CLR on that shit. Luke of the Vile, we're going to do that later on Rumble. Uh, Jesse Bear, 2115, says, I never thought I would see the day when Democrats on Twitter would admit to showering with their own daughters in an attempt to normalize Biden. Showering with his daughter. Wasn't his daughter 30? And was she just like 16? Did they have showers back then? How old's his daughter? Hmm. Uh, me, 04120 says, I hope your shoulders earn a million dollars and get hair. Harry, so Riley uh, has to shave them for you. Riley can shave my showers anytime. Showers? Shoulders. He can't shave my shower, though. The hair on the shower stays. Uh, Magnum Norse. My man, Rakeda, is a little animated tonight. I don't know, my friend. Uh, Bill Dozer, 74, says, Trump never partied with P. Diddy. I didn't like him. He was a little short. A little short. Not Barely in the billionaires club. Barely. Rappers don't make it far. In the billionaire club, something about, you know, well, it's exclusive. We don't like those types, if you know what I mean. It's it's empty. That's not good. Um, so anyway, that wasn't mayonnaise. It's don't you dare. Her diary said she was 11. Oh, that's why it wasn't typed on a computer. That's why it was written in a diary. Which is actually, for her, a stone tablet, I'm sure. How old is Biden's daughter? I gotta find out. How did the empty taste? Well, there was a drip, so it was like a half taste. Women know what I'm talking about. There's like a half taste. It wasn't the full experience. It was good. It's Oh, here. I got this bottle of Booker's. This is a 2024 uh, batch one. Bookers is uh, pretty good. 62 and a quarter percent alcohol. So it's a light, it's a lightweight whiskey. Okay. How old is Biden? How old is Biden's daughter? Ashley, but wait, she's my age. Well, she's six months older than me. Sweet Pea says, Nick, when are we going to go to the gay 90s? Anytime. That'd be hilarious. Why the fuck are you Googling this? I want to know. I want to know when he showered with her. If she's 42, because I'm 42, 81 babies. Um, and she was 11. He showered with her. That's 31 years ago. That was all the way back in 19. Just kidding. 92, 1992, right? So in 1992, Biden showered with his daughter, allegedly. That's gross. That's weird. They did have showers then. All right. That's all I wanted to talk about. That's it. Are you going to get the Super Troopers whistle pig stuff? I haven't seen a Super Troopers whistle pig. That's weird. Man. All right. How old is Biden? If she's born in 81, he's born in 42. 
My Negro had her at 39 years old? Shit. Okay. 39. How old? My last kid was born. Uh, my youngest is six. Says I'm 42. That means I was 30, uh, 36. That's too old. 39 is old. I was just curious. Just curious. All right. Um, let's get to this. Uh, let's get to this shit. Get to the shit. This is from the most reputable news source online, The Guardian. The UK, no, just The Guardian, not the UK Guardian. They're different somehow. Here we go. I didn't want to burp in the microphone. MVC says my last kid. Well, I'm not having another. Like that's not in the plan. Most recent? Like, what do you want me to say? King Ginger 3033 says I'm 34 with no kids. And I feel like it's too late at this point. Not gonna lose hope though. No. Look, if you're a dude, you can have kids as late as you want, really. You just kind of have a, a woman young enough to have them or you got to, you know, I don't know, steal one or something from like Lutherans. I don't know. Like you can get them from all over the place. The county sells them. Every county sells children. They're just, a lot of times they got problems. They're like defective models. It's very sad. I say that as a joke and I realize like how fucking awful that is. Guys, you know, um, if you're a foster parent, right? If you're a foster parent and you want to foster babies and hopefully adopt one, unfortunately, 90% plus those babies have some sort of uh, birth defect or stunted, uh, some sort of delayed development, maybe dealing with problems. If you want, or, and a lot of them are minorities as well. It's just how it works out. And uh, so if, if you're like, well, we're not rich. Because if you're rich, you could just go buy a Russian baby or whatever. Like, you could just buy... But who did that? Uh, who was that guy? The gay guy? His husband, they, like, bought a baby from some... I think they bought a surrogate baby, right? Dave Rubin. Dave Rubin. He bought, like, a surrogate baby. Right? He did that. If you're rich, you could just buy a baby. You can buy a surrogate baby. You could just buy a living baby. You could buy a baby. You could buy Kevin Sorbo if you're rich enough. Call him a baby. Well, he's probably into it. Put on some Depends, put a pacifier in his mouth, come little Hercules, oh, little Hercules. Like you could do that, pose him around, whatever would be weird. His wife would visit, that'd be strange. But she's got homeschool books, so why would you care? Anyway, if you're rich enough, you can do cool stuff like that. But most people are not rich. So they're like, well, shit, we're poor. How are we going to do this? If you want to adopt like a foreign baby, like a foreign baby, what it doesn't matter the race. You have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars. You have to like go visit the countries a couple times. If they, like they don't let you buy babies. It's not like a supermarket, right? With babies, like a Japanese vending machine. Cause the, the Japanese aren't making them. So you just steal them from Koreans and put them in vending machines. Like ah, sitting there hanging and you go up and you press the button, like E12 and you press E11. They're like, Oh no, it's a break one. No, that's, that's how they go. Like they don't want to do that. They press the wrong button. They're trying to buy a Mexican baby cause they need the roof shingled in 12 years. I don't know what they do. That's other countries. In the U.S., if you want to buy a foreign baby, you can't buy a foreign baby. You have to, like, travel there and pretend like you care about the orphanage that's abusing them, that you're buying them from. And, like, Helga or Olga or Olega or uh, Nostofia or whatever name there is of the evil fucking Eastern European woman who's got, like, seven wooden spoons because she keeps shoving them in the children for random problems that they have. She... It's got to be great. Like you got to pay her a bunch of money and you got to call her pretty, even though she looks like Putin's boyfriend and you have to like grease her. You have to do this like twice for weeks. And then you have to pay the import fee on a baby. The import fee on a baby is huge. Just ask the Amistad. It's not cheap. You can't just import a Russian baby. 
or Ukraine. Well, Ukrainian babies are a little cheaper because they're under duress. There's a fire sale on Ukrainian babies right now. They're trying to get those motherfuckers out of there. So you're like, wow, whoo. It's like the Walmart clearance section on Christmas Eve. You're like, ah, yes. I hope one of them has both eyes. That's all you're going for. You just don't go to Ukraine right now. But if you're going anywhere else, like just go to Chechnya and you buy a little, it's like, oh, it's like a little double model. It's like, if you transform it, it's a Muslim. You transform it back, it's a Russian. It's amazing. You can do that, but you have to pay a shitload of money. And then you have to pay all the legal fees and you have to pay, it comes out to like 20, 30 grand. People can't do this. It's very expensive. So instead, what you do, you do the sensible thing. You go with the worst possible option for a product, which is the government version, right? Like you could go buy craft from Russia. It's like, ah, this little baby says, yeah, and puts his pacifier in his mouth. Oh, it's adorable. Ha <laughs> ha. And it grows up and abuses itself. So you don't have to abuse it because that's how the Russian models work, right? Because they're communist. And so the Russia baby abuses itself. Like they do that. So you don't have to. But while they're babies, they're cute because they're not ambulatory yet. They can't move towards suicide at that point. You get the, that's the craft. That's not Crystal Farms. That's craft. And they get better from there. I'm not going to name the better countries. You can figure them out on your own. But the worst model is the government cheese every single time. So you're like, oh, I'm going to be a foster parent. It'll be great. We'll foster a baby. We'll adopt it. You're like, why does this baby come with a 10-foot tall wheelchair? I don't even know. Like, babies needed this. It's like, I'm sorry. It's terrible. It's terrible. They have web pages where you can pick your weird foster baby's defects. It's gross. I hate it. I hate the government. I hate it so much. And they're like, look, we're helping these children. I'm like, oh my God, you have a web page where it's like, let me find the least defective Toyota Prius that still has a battery that works. Because if you don't have the one with the battery pack, it has to have the external model with the plugs that go into its chest and you have to change those out. It's not good. So what color do you want? There's only three options and they don't show dirt. It's bad, guys. It's bad. And if you don't think it's bad, find your county website for adopting a baby. See how long they've spent in the NICU. It's longer than Biden has been alive. These babies are 86 years old and they've never left the hospital. That's what you're getting. It's terrifying. It's horrible. The government killed the fucking adoption industry in the United States. It's gross. It's nasty. It's like clandestine. You have to go through like weird connections to get one now. And the rules around it are fucking catastrophic. It's only the rich buy babies, as always. And they're just eating them. That's all they're doing. They're like, mm, well, I'm going to take this to Buffalo Wild Wings, dust it up, and deep fry it. <laughs> God, fuck it. Mm. Hey guys, in a moment of seriousness, I hate humanity. I hate it. 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 Do you realize our better option? Like that rant wasn't jokes. I know it sounded like jokes. Everything in that rant was real. hundred percent. It's scary. It's scary. I hate humanity. I hate it. We've got Christians Towning pro-life. We've got all these people. They're little placards walking around. Your options are kill a baby, buy a baby with a bunch of money, or adopt a government-issued retarded baby. It's fucking terrifying. It's horrible how we classify and categorize humanity like this because no one wants to just have a baby. No one wants to just, oh, I don't know, take accountability for what they do who they are, what their choices are. They don't want to do any of that. That's hard. It's hard to do. That require, oh, might not get to go to, I might not get to go to Curves and sit down and talk to other fat fucking women while drinking lattes that you get at Curves. The Curves latte keeps you coming back. Humanity's a shit. It's gross. People who profess to be good aren't good. The people who profess to be bad are at least honest. And fuck me. Your options for trying to help out in the world, for trying to fix something, or heaven forbid, heaven forbid, you're one of those poor, cursed couples who's infertile, 
for some reason. And you're like, oh, you want a baby that looks like you and might be healthy? We'll put you on a waiting list. How long? I don't know. 10, 12, 13 years. When it comes, I hope you got 30 grand. Hope you got 30 grand. Oh, and if you if you buy a baby like the proper way, the mom has it. You, you agree, like, oh, we're gonna adopt your baby. We pay all your medical bills, we pay your legal fees. She has a year, she has a year return policy on the baby you take from her. Cause that's fair. For some reason. Some reason. Well, I'm going to sell this thing that's bothering me. It's going to ruin my life, but I can sell it. I can get paid for it. I can make this nice family pay for all the shit. All of my choices, they can pay for it at least. Family pays for it. They get very excited. Baby's nine months old. Sorry. Kind of want it back. I got a job at Target now. They have daycare. Humanity's awful. We pretend it's not a flesh trade. We pretend. Pretend over and over and over that you're not buying babies. Oh, we're not just selling people. Yeah, you are. Admit it. Just admit it. Just let people buy babies. Why is that a problem? They're doing it. They're buying the fucking babies. And when they can't afford them, they go to the government model. And the government model has issues. There's salvage titles on those kids. Literally. Because guess what? Here's a really horrible truth. Those kids weren't born that way like Lady Gaga. Nah, man. They're born to fucking shit people. Shit people who treated them terribly. And the only fortune those kids have ever faced in their life is that they're still alive. And a lot of people wouldn't consider that fortune. I fucking hate humanity. You want to talk about the flesh trade in the United States right now? That'll make you hate humanity way more than pretty much anything else. Well, if you're me. If you're me. That's why I don't talk about it. That's why I don't think about it. Thanks, guys. You assholes. You brought me to this. All right, let's talk about happy stuff. Ugandan court rejects petition to overturn the harsh anti-gay law. Don't worry. No one's buying these homo babies. Legislation adopted last year outraged LGBTQ plus community, rights activists, the UN, and Western nations. Wait. <laughs> it's not the anti game. They have a picture. Transgender women at a safe house in Kampala. The Anti-Homosexuality Act, Homosexuality Act 2023 imposes penalties of up to life in prison for consensual same-sex relations and contains provisions that make, quote, aggravated homosexuality an offense punishable by death. I know you guys have seen aggravated homosexuality. It's when you drive too close to a bike lane, right? Like, like no, stop it. That guy gets the death penalty, not you. Uh, here we go. Oh, shit. Uh, Dr. Frost says, for fuck's sake, I'm 48 and just had my third kid. Wife is young AF, though. Uh, I don't want my third kid. Obviously, I have five. I don't want another kid at 48. <laughs> well, I'll be 66 years old when they're 18. Oh, my God. Uh, Tyrant's blood. Says, I can speak to this. My wife was adopted from Russia. My father-in-law spent around $25,000 by the end of it all. Fucking wild. We thought about doing that sometime, uh, that too sometime in the future if Russia allowed it again, but I don't know. It's so much money. This guy's wife, so she, that, we're talking 20 years ago, 25,000. I don't know how old they are. 20 years ago, 25 grand. Fuck. Fuck. All right, so here we go. Uganda's constitutional court has rejected a bid to overturn a controversial anti-gay law that is considered one of the toughest in the world. We decline to nullify the Anti-Homosexuality Act 2023 in its entirety. Neither will we grant a permanent injunction against its enforcement Justice Richard Butera, Uganda's deputy chief justice and head of the court, said in the landmark ruling. The legislation was adopted in May last year, triggering, out triggering outrage among the LGBTQ plus community. Oh, I hope they all loudly protested in Uganda. 
That would be a bad idea. Jesus Christ. Tyrant's Blood says it was in 1997. So again, $25,000 in 1997. I hope you have $45,000 today. It's probably more. It imposes penalties of up to life in prison for consensual same-sex relations and contains provisions that make aggravated homosexuality an offense punishable by death. I really do want to know what aggravated homosexuality is. Hold on. I'm going to... I'm going to search this on my own 2023. Ooh. How many pages is this? I hope it's written and you got it. No, ba wait, this is a school of law at UCLA. I don't want that shit. Parliament of Uganda. That's where we're going. That's where we're going to find the real, the real truth. We're not going to the stupid Williams Institute of law at UCLA. You just, can I open this? Can we fucking open We'll keep going while I wait. Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> President Yoweri Museveni's government has struck a defiant tone with officials accusing the West. I love Uganda. I really do. I have Ugandan soccer jersey, but it's trash. Actually, all the lettering is falling off. It's an imitation jersey. Cost 20 bucks. One week's pay in Uganda, by the way. Cost 20 bucks. My parents bought it for me when they were there. They're like, well, how much is this? It's like $20. I'm like, oh my God, that is a lot of money. Starting for how poor America is. And then my parents are like, wait, what? Yes, Ugandan driver. Uh, my parents went to Uganda. They were not allowed to tip the driver because the driver made like 20 bucks a week because that's like the median weekly pay in Uganda. Like if you tip this guy like 20 bucks, you disrupt the entire economy, right? It's fucking crazy. But so they're there and they go and they buy this Uganda soccer jersey for me. Well, it's made in Uganda. So in traditional fashion, like it just, it's garbage. Like all the lettering fell off. It's terrible. But this driver, the driver that they can't tip because he makes a whopping 20 bucks a week or whatever. Maybe it was a month. I don't know. What does time matter in Uganda? It's just the time between stepping on a bomb, right? Or a landmine or whatever, having someone with a machete attack you. They're not allowed to tip this guy and they're driving. And he turns to me, he apologizes. He's like, I'm so sorry for the brutal state of America and poverty. My parents are like, excuse me, what? Like, oh yeah. Cause they have like CNN and the Associated Press. So they read American news stories about the poor in America and how bad they have it. And like, well, they're just trying to get a reasonable minimum wage. It's like, Motherfucker, you work at McDonald's here. You work at a clothing store. You work at a grocery store. You make your weekly salary an hour. An hour. You make it every hour. Like, you don't have to worry about them. They brought clothes to hand out and stuff because they had all this suitcase room. They're like, well, we'll fill with clothes because they wanted to bring back stuff. So they loaded up some extra suitcases with clothes and stuff to donate. And they're driving by these villages. These people are... These kids, especially, they're wearing towels and bed sheets as clothes. They're ripped up. They're gross. They're dirty. Like they're not clean. Not whatever. They're handing out like you know jeans and t-shirts and stuff like that. And then these people are apologizing for American poverty. It's how broken, how broken the American news media is. All right. Anyway, sorry. Uh, the officials are accusing the West of trying to pressure Africa, I bless the rains down Africa, into accepting homosexuality. Never accept, only reject. Reject modernity, embrace tradition. The petition was brought by two law professors from Makerere University in Kampala. Well, they're about to lose tenure. I'm guessing. Where is my tenure? In the electric chair, motherfucker. Legislatures from the ruling party and human rights activists. Okay, cool. They had charged that it violates fundamental rights guaranteed by Uganda's constitution, including freedom from discrimination and the right to privacy. Look, they're not discriminating. They treat all homosexuals the same. The petitioners also said it contravened Uganda, Uganda's commitments under international human rights law, including the United Nations Convention Against Torture. What do they torture them, though? Like, what do they do? Like, tickle them with feathers until they die? What is the death penalty there? 
figure they probably don't have reliable like, electricity, so I was thinking about it. They can't waterboard them to death because they don't have enough women to carry the jugs from their head up from the river. So how do the Ugandans torture? I don't know. I know. I guess they just talk to him in pigeon or whatever. The court had begun hearing the case in December. They just played Taylor Swift songs translated into pigeon. A 20-year-old man became the first Ugandan to be charged with aggravated homosexuality under the contested law in August last year. He was accused of, quote, unlawful sexual intercourse with a male adult age 41. An offense punishable by death. Death. That's a 21-year age gap. Death penalty. This is not the DP you're looking for. Uganda, a conservative, predominantly Christian country in East Africa. Oh, it's in the East? I didn't actually. Guys, you remember African geography? I don't because when I took it, the Republic of the Congo was called Zaire. It actually still changes. Europe did as well. Like I remember when Czechoslovakia was one country, but I remember when Africa was one country. The Lion King or whatever. Like, Simba, one day, all you see will be yours. Until the Rwandan genocide. Then it won't be yours anymore, you fucking lion. Is notorious for its intolerance of homosexuality. It has resisted pressure from rights organizations. Who cares? The UN... Who cares? And foreign governments, who cares? Like, look, I don't want them to kill homos. I don't want them to do that. The U.S., which threatened to cut aid and investments to Kampala. Uh, I just want to point out that the U.S. is so committed, so committed to the gays that they threatened to cut aid but didn't. They didn't. They didn't cut the aid. An investment to Kampala imposed visa bans on unnamed officials in December for abusing human rights, including those of the LGBTQ community. Who cares? Oh no, ban my visas. They don't want visas to the US. They want to they want to press gays back in Uganda. They're not trying to get here. The World Bank. There's a World Bank. I have to know, right? Like I have to know. Like, as a musical, like, I have to know. Like, how Jewish do you have to be to run the World Bank? Like is, that, is that, like, I know, like, so if you're a Jew and you go Super Saiyan, you become Ashkenazi, right? Like, Ashkenazi? Uh, no, Ashkenazi. That was an Ashkenazi Jew in Germany in 1943. But Ashkenazi is, like, the ones who, they ask for directions back to being smart Jews. They got to make it. Ashkenazis didn't make it. All right. But like, that's like Super Saiyan Jew. Juper Saiyan, right? So if you go Juper Saiyan, you become Ashkenazi. You get very, very smart for a while, but you burn out quickly and people get tired of you really fast. Like, is it is it Ashkenazi 4? Like, what level of Super uh, Juper Saiyan do you have to go to run the World Bank? I just, or do you just have, like, are you Klaus Schwab? What do you have to do? Oh, Rothschild. So I'm just, you have to own a bagel restaurant at least. Well, right. That, Cause that's your, your prep for running the world bank is to run a bagel shop, but you have to run a bagel shop in a community that doesn't want them. Like a Vietnamese community in the Midwest. They don't want bagels. They don't want bagels. When they're saying, fuck you, that's not, they're not trying to give you soup, man. Like that's, if you run a successful bagel shop in a Vietnamese community in the Midwest, you get to run the World Bank. That's true. That's like a PlayStation achievement. The Duke says, Raggets, Uganda is trying to slow down the spread of AIDS and other faggy diseases. I, I don't care what Uganda is trying. Uganda tries to do whatever they want, right? Okay, the World Bank announced in August it was suspending new loans to Uganda over the law, which, quote, fundamentally contradicts the values espoused by the U.S.-based lender. What values? I guess they like gays. Like, it fundamentally contradicts. Like, if you're trying to kill gays, we're trying to grow them. 
Like they have vats of gays. That's what the World Bank just told me. They have a bunch of vats incubating gays all over the place. It's like San Francisco. In December, the Ugandan State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Henry Okello Oriem, accused the West of seeking, quote, to coerce us into accepting same-sex relationships using aid and loans. Like, look, they want to give us aid to give us AIDS. But we don't want the AIDS or the poo-poo. In 2014, international donors slashed aid a decade ago. They're literally reporting on a decade ago to Uganda after Museveni approved a bill that sought to impose life imprisonment for homosexual relations, which was later overturned. Look, I'm not going to say you should be thrown in prison for gay butt sex. I'm not going to say you should be. But you should consider if you should be. Because it's weird. No, but guys, look at this. They're talking about a 2023 Anti-Homosexuality Act, right? In, in all seriousness. Well, in 2014, international donors, private people, slashed aid to Uganda. That was 10 years before. Maybe they thought his bill didn't go far enough. Maybe they were like the old Catholics. Not the priest. The latest anti-gay law has enjoyed. Oh, it's it's personified now. The law is enjoying it. Broad support in the country. Can you imagine this law is like, yes, I am enjoying broad support. Where lawmakers I'm trying not to yawn because it's racist. Have defended the measures as a necessary bulwark against Western immorality. Look, guys, I, I know. I know. Like, oh, Nick, you are a degenerate pile of trash. Like, you, you endorse the gays. You're like, you're like, okay, if trans people put dicks on their arms or whatever. You know, this, this one guy, like, I know he's got just an arm full of dicks. It looks like a fir tree of dicks. They don't get erect. They just flop around uncomfortably. Sadly. He's hanging off his wrist like Popeye if he didn't eat spinach, but he ate cum. It's gross. But say, and I'm like, I don't care what people do. They're like, you're a gross degenerate. Yeah, I know. I know. I am Western immorality. I got it. I'm not going to Uganda. Keep me the fuck away. But you do you, Uganda. You're like the girl who never needed a prom date. Because she already knew the football players by size. That's me. Wait, no, that's you. That's Uganda. I don't know how that analogy works up, but Uganda puts the anal in analogy. Never mind. I am Western immorality. Uganda's based. Red pilled, Christ pilled. Like Jesus Christ got rid of. Last month, the Ugandan court dismissed an appeal by a gay rights group. You don't get to appeal. You're not appealing. Seeking government registry. Well, think about it. A Ugandan court cannot grant an appeal to a gay rights group. They would say the gay rights group are appealing. They would get executed next. You can't do that. Ruling that it aimed to promote unlawful activities. The Court of Appeals said any registration of the group Sexual Minorities Uganda Smug was against the public interest and national policy. Who the fuck is this chick? Who wrote this? Who wrote the article? Agence France Press. So uh, this wasn't even written by the fucking Guardian. They translated it from French. How embarrassing would that be? Did uh, you write an article today? Uh, no, uh, me, my, my boss. I uh, Look, I know you told me I have the line. I have to write an article. I have to get it out there before Booyah Boys comes. Uh, we got to eat a uh, Booyah Boys. I love fish soup. Fish soup, I think they call it, with a hot dog, a dog, uh, and uh, I wear my chemise. Oh, I know you got deadline, so uh, I just uh, take a article from French speaking country. Uh, I don't even know what do we own anymore. And they're like, no, the Africans own us now. Uh, oh yeah, forgot the Africans own us. But uh, I take article from African boss, and I uh, translate to English from it. Uh, probably not well. What the fuck? <laughs> From Agence France Press. Why is Uganda News? 
being translated by the Guardian into English. I fucking hate the French. God damn it. I like France. It'd be better if it wasn't filled with French and now Muslims. Uh, 719 Rug Sucker says it's not illegal to sell your kids. It's only illegal if you know that the people are going to do something illegal with them. I mean, I guess. Maybe I should have some more. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. Uganda. Uganda's here. And I I want... Uganda's national language is French. I, no wonder there's so many gays. God damn, guys. Stop eating buttholes. I wanted to bring up this article because, one, it's funny. It's funny. Like... It's not funny if you're a gay in Uganda, right? Like, if you're a gay in Uganda, you read that article, you're like, oh, holy shit. And I don't even get to eat the this poo poo. Like, they do they're mad because felching is not an option on the article. They look at it and they go, holy fuck, our government's trying to kill us. That's bad. I'm with them. Like, that's not good, man. You should get on a bus. Don't go through any tunnels because it might be a tight fit. You should get on a bus and go to a different country. Go away from Uganda. I would give that advice generally, though. Where would you go? I don't know. Ethiopia, Kenya. All of them sound bad, but not as bad. Uganda seems cool. If you're not gay, Uganda seems awesome. But if you're gay, it seems really bad. Okay? And look, I don't want gays killed. I'm not, I'm not there. There's some gays I want killed, but that's for specific things. It's not all gays. All gays haven't done anything bad to me at all. They're like generally jovial. I like them. I like around the gays all day. I'm like, hey guys, tell me about my shirt. Is it cool? And they're like, no. No, you should do this. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. How'd you know that? They're like, we're gay. Of course, it's built into us. Like, God, you guys are better than women, except you don't have vaginas, so I don't want to hang out with you. I'm like, ah, we know. We don't want to hang out with you either, unless... Stop it. Stop it. I'm only two drinks in. No. See, this is... I'm fine with gay people. They're great. I'll hang around them all day. There's a comedian I was watching the other day. He's He was gay. Big surprise. He's super gay. He's very gay. He's talking about when uh, he came out. Buddy, you didn't need to. They knew. They were just making those jokes uncomfortably instead of comfortably. Um, He came out to his uh, friends in college. And then they're like, oh, well, we're going to go on a road trip, but he's like, but what? Well, maybe you should get your own room. He's like, why? I don't know if we should stay in the room with you. He's like, how about you just don't fuck me? Right? Like, cause he was gay, but he wasn't trying to fuck his friends. He was gay the entire time he knew his friends and he still wasn't trying to have sex with those guys. Fine with this. I don't mind. Like the gays aren't trying to have sex with me most of the time. Okay, it happened the other day, like a couple gay guys tried to pick me up, but that's fine. That's that's an isolated, very common incident. Because they're like, look at him, he's so thin, he's got to be a twink. And I'm like, no, I have a beard, please leave me alone. Anyway, I don't have any problem with gays. That's what I'm trying to say. But, there's always a but when we're talking about gays, otherwise it'd be hetero. Um, Uganda does. Uganda is a problem with the gays. If I was gay, I would not go to Uganda. In fact, I wouldn't go to Uganda now because you kind of watch a YouTube video and be like, why are you gay? I'm like, I'm not though. I just don't like Ugandan women. So like, that's weird. I don't like Ugandan men either. They're like, they're like oh no, you'll find what? No, no, I don't want a Ugandan guy. Like, but the Ugandan women are not my type. They have a tooth gap. They don't. Okay, no, look, I'm not into them. I don't want to, I can't even pronounce their names. I don't want to remember. To, if I can't pronounce their names, I'll learn it. I don't want to remember. I'm not going to Uganda. Are you going? Why, why would I? What am I going to do? Like play a Vuvuzela at a soccer match for ESPN? No. No, that's for poor people. I don't want to go to Uganda, okay? So, But they wouldn't want me there either. They'd think I was gay. If I was black, they'd think I was really gay because black people are kind of like gay. A lot of them. All of them. All black people are gay. Most black people hide it. Is my theory, right? Like bl all blacks are gay. It's like a logic problem. Like all blacks are blorks. Blorks are gay. 
but all Borgs aren't blacks. Wait, don't, don't, that, that's not the right thing. You get it, right? Like, cause they're not openly gay. They're, they're closeted gay if they can afford a closet. Otherwise, they're just like baby mama's closeted gay. Or they're like that one bitch's closet that I went into one time to hide from her while I texted my other bitch. That, that closet, that type of gay. There's a very big strand of gay in the black community. I'm not Ugandan. I don't want to go there. Neither do you. Neither do gay people. Very bad place. But the question is, you don't, not, question is not, if you're gay, do you want to go to Uganda? Of course, the, the answer is easy. The question is, can Uganda criminalize homosexuality? In a really, really serious question. Jokes aside, silly stuff aside. Can Uganda actually criminal, criminalize homosexuality? In the United States, we can't. Because of Franklin or something. I think it's Franklin. Texas v. Franklin. They're like, ah, we caught these two homos one dick in the ass right now. Which one do we charge with sodomizing the other? It's like, well, both. And they're like, all right, perfect. The problem with Texas sodomy laws under Frank, I think it was Franklin. No, that was Lawrence v. Texas. Sorry, Lawrence v. Texas is, is the gay one. They're in a motel. Two gay guys are like mid, um, it's not coitus, but mid grunting. I hope mid, I hope there wasn't dust, but actual spit or whatever. Like they're doing that, and the cops walk in because of course cops would walk in on a gay guy fucking another gay guy. So they do as if they didn't know. Like they're seriously, they're at the night's in or whatever. They're walking by room 6A. You hear, yeah, 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 yeah. And the, the other guy's like, oh, ow, uh, get it, uh, uh, more. Like, see, you're telling me the cops are outside room 6A and they're like, that those are a couple of figgits, right? Like, they're not, they don't know. We don't know what we're walking into. Sounds like a hostile situation. <laughs> they bust the door down. Like, why are you riding on him? Why is he wearing so much leather? Like, why is he tied up? They know exactly what they're getting into. Lawrence v. Texas, you're like, okay. My God, this is a problem. So Lawrence v. Texas wasn't an anti-gay law, though, in its writing. It was an anti-gay law in its application. Because if they walked up to room 7B and they heard, yeah, go get it, yeah, get in your ass. And then there's like, a, they hear, get it boy and it's like a chick they're not opening the door and just explain Lawrence v. Texas and the problem with it the law was facially neutral but the law was only applied to homos who were fucking other homos buttockses like if a guy was plowing a chick in the buttocks they didn't care the cops actually they didn't bust in they just put one of the wireless cameras in they went oh god she is huge like that's because they're at a night's in. You don't go to a night's in to find good sexual encounters. You go to a night's in because all of the other hotels are taken. Right? That's what you do. That's why there's nine Cadillacs in line at eight uh, at 4 a.m. It's just the night's in way. They're all gay too. Lawrence v. Texas was applied that way. Anyway, that's how the U.S. works. Because we have the 14th Amendment. And like, look, the 14th Amendment guarantees substantive due process. You can't discriminate based on gayness if you're going to outlaw butt sex, outlaw all of it. And also, because Scalia, Scalia wrote the dissent in Lawrence v. Texas, he's like, of course we can outlaw butt sex. What's the problem? Christian uh, homo or heterosexuals shouldn't have butt sex either. And Claire sounds like, well, Scalia, this is one place we'll disagree. But anyway, Scalia's like, no, we can make that illegal. But the problem was that the law as it was written, it was the law as it was applied. They never tried to arrest heterosexual couples shoving dicks in asses or mouths. Guys, when, you, when you're like, sodomy, yeah, we should, illegal, we should make that illegal. Sodomy is also blowjobs, okay? Just because it's a man's teeth on that dick doesn't mean it's not sodomy when it's a woman's teeth on yours, okay? You got to understand this. That's the problem with Lawrence v. Texas. And they're like, well, these laws are facially neutral, but when you apply them, it only applies to gays. Uganda's like, don't be gay. Way different. 
complete opposite. They don't have a 14th Amendment. You know why? Because Uganda didn't enslave. Well, actually, probably Uganda did enslave black people, but it wasn't called Uganda back then. It was called like King Hutsi the Third's territory, where we enslaved black people just like us. Because and then the British came and fixed that. No, the French, because the French is the French came. They didn't fix that. They're like, oh, we like the slaves, right? Like, oh, we we don't have to put them in leather. Because they already are the color of the black leather. We just stitch zippers under their mouths and it is okay. French people are gross. I don't know how to say this. They came and they tried to solve that shit. No. It's as applied because we have a 14th Amendment. They don't. They didn't have a civil war in the United States and have a Reconstruction era. Because they're French. Do the French reconstruct anything? No. You know why? Because they're French and they hide from their problems. Look, all I'm trying to say is, can you gone to do this? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like what, how does one sovereign state tell another sovereign state? Actually, by the way, you gotta, you gotta legalize that gay shit. You gotta like, why? They sound like Texans. Now they're like, why should we do that? We'll legalize that gay shit. And the whole world's like, you know what? Actually, that's a pretty good point. That's a pretty good point. Why should you allow gay shit? And, and seriously, think about it. We accept for no reason the idea that we have to allow all lifestyles in all capacities. Well, it's immutable. Like, look, that's a good argument in the U.S. because we have a 14th Amendment and a 5th Amendment. We have a Civil Rights Act, 1964. We have these things, but nobody else has these things that they have to adhere to. We do. Why do we decide everybody else does? I don't want Uganda to kill the gays. I think they have bad fashion sense in Uganda. I think the gays could help. I think they need queer eye for the straight guy. I think they need those two faggoty, a, a gay, God damn it, those two gay twin guys who uh, renovate houses and have sex with each other while they do it, you know, those guys that like their chins are like a little too perfect. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the property brothers. You know who I'm talking about. Those guys are definitely incestuous gays or whatever. I want Ugandan versions of those guys. Like I want them to fix the housing problem in Uganda. Have the, make the women bring the pot, the urns, pots, whatever, of water up on their head, the river water, the dirty river water with the dysentery in it. I want the gays to say, I won't drink that. I only drink bottled water. That's going to save them. I want them. And you, I don't want Uganda to do this, but I'm not Uganda. I don't get to tell them what to do. Why does the U.S. or Ru Russia, why does anybody, Europeans, oh, the Europeans, no wonder they don't want anti-gay bills. They're all gay, even if they don't have sex with the same gender. They're just gay because Europe is gay. Why do we listen to these people? Why should Uganda? We know the way, brothers. Brothers, we got this. We know the way. I genuinely have no idea why it suddenly... Think about this. Why is it the global zeitgeist that westernized bitch nations tell every other nation what their human rights laws have to be? Is it because we have money? It's because we have money, right? Like that guy, Uganda's a 7-Eleven, right? And we're the first black billionaire in Atlanta. And when we go to the 7-Eleven as the United States, we want to buy all the menthols from Uganda, all of them, because we're not going back to our children, even though we're billionaires. And we go, I need you to sell me all the menthols and also not oppress the gays. And you guys like, can't do it, buddy. Best I can do is seven fifty, Like the Pawn Stars guy. Why do we get to make policy for other countries? Sovereign nations get to be sovereign nations. They do. Obviously, I don't want Uganda to kill gay people. I don't, I don't care what like they do. Other than that, just like, please don't kill gay people. Actually, just don't kill your own citizens in general. Like, that's a good idea. Don't kill the people who pay the taxes. 
or whatever. Look, Uganda, if you just let the gays thrive, they're going to pay a lot of taxes. They're going to do it. They're going to get rich. They're going to all be heart surgeons or whatever because they're gay and they want to fix the love organ because they're all so stupid and they think love comes from the heart, but actually just blood goes through the heart. There's ventricles. That's it. It's a muscle. Kalima. That guy was gay too. That's why Harrison Ford was running from him. All right, guys, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the rumble flip. It took a little too long to do that. We're going to do it anyway. And then I'm going to take a, a bathroom break. And then we're going to get to the next stories in just a second. All right. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. If you're on YouTube, the link to rumble is in the chat pinned. It's also in the description. Come join us over on rumble. Let's continue the show. We're not going to talk about Uganda anymore. You know why? Because they eat the poo poo. Jack's heart. He sent a YouTube video. We're going to, we're going to watch that when we get back. All right, YouTube. I love you all. Catch you soon. Have a good night. Peace. Peace. Rumble. We're coming into rumble like a gay Ugandan on vacation out of the country. Peace. Peace. Fist. <laughs>